Chapter 16 Saboteur's Headquarter The night was shrouded in darkness as Tarek and Zishan cautiously observed the headquarters of the saboteurs. Unusually high traffic flowed into the compound, each vehicle meticulously inspected before being allowed entry. The tension in the air was palpable as the gate closed behind each car, sealing their fate within. There were no bystanders outside the gate, no vehicles waiting. It seemed every saboteur in the country had converged on this location for an important meeting. Zishan exchanged a glance with Tarek and jotted a message on a piece of paper, I'm going inside this bungalow. If a policeman inquires, tell them our location. If things get dangerous, I'll use the pendants button, and hopefully, someone will come to help. If not, contact Inspector Shoei. Tarek attempted to dissuade Zishan with gestures, but his resolve was unwavering. They had already hidden their bicycles and now approached the rear of the bungalow, seeking an entry point. Zishan identified a single option, climbing the sewer pipe and then a tree inside the compound. He checked the matchbox in his pocket, having kept it since the day he discovered the bungalow's location. As Zishan reached for the tree's branches, Tarek sensed someone approaching. There was an individual stumbling along, more from drunkenness than clumsiness. The stranger passed, taking slow, erratic steps, puffing on a cigarette. Tarek realized that the stumbling was intentional, as the man seemed inebriated. Tarek directed his gaze upwards, where Zishan was carefully descending towards the trunk of the tree, preferring stealth over noise. Once out of sight, Tarek retrieved his bicycle and cycled away, despite the freezing night. He was sweating, trying to navigate with a malfunctioning bicycle, his mind racing with worry. He prayed for a policeman to arrive soon and inform them about Zishan's whereabouts. Meanwhile, as Inspector Shoaib departed, Haga Imran implored the jailer to release him temporarily, promising to return promptly. The jailer, however, remained adamant, citing the welfare of his own family. Aga persisted, you know my son's life is in danger. The jailer retorted, I cannot jeopardize my children's well-being. Aga glanced at the door and was about to leave when the jailer aimed a pistol at him. Sir, don't force me to shoot, the jailer warned. Aga pleaded with the jailer to consider his son's precarious situation, but the jailer remained steadfast. Aga's frustration reached its limits, and in an impulsive moment, he managed to disarm the jailer. Taking control, Aga handcuffed the jailer to his own table, silencing him with a cloth. Then, he collected a set of civilian clothes the jailer had kept in the office and locked the room from the outside. The telephone incessantly rang inside, but Aga couldn't afford any further delays. A police motorcycle stationed nearby caught Aga's attention. He started the bike and made his exit from the jail. At the gate, officers congratulated him on his bail, and one even offered to drive him in a jeep. The situation unraveled swiftly, and a manhunt for Mr. Aga commenced. Yet, he remained an enigma, lost to the depths of the night, eluding capture as though swallowed by the vast expanse of the sky. <laughs>